What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. Today is Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. A lot of people have been asking me about the staking rewards. How much will they get? Is there a grandfather system going on? Because they see the staking rewards going down over time. In fact, I have a user who asked a question that I felt that many people share. So I'm going to read the question to you and then answer it. So here we go. Very useful. I got a question. So the very useful is in regard to a video that I did. It was a tutorial on how to stake your ICP tokens. And here's his question. I noticed that six months ago, you did a video. ICP staking rates was at 28.9%. And this video shows 20.8%. And now it is around 15%. Will this rate for newcomers who lock now? Or... The rate will keep changing after you locked eight years. The reason why I ask this is because the rate is dropping pretty fast. So I think this user is asking a question that many people express to me. Um, they're worried that you know their percentage yield in terms of how much they get in return uh, will not be as lucrative. Uh, you know, not too long ago the staking rewards were twenty eight point nine percent. Now it's 15%, who knows what it'll be tomorrow. So there's a lot of confusion as to how much people will get paid. Is there a grandfather system going on here? People want to know what's going on. So I want to answer the question and maybe this might be useful to you watching. I do want to um, uh, cite my reference before I start. Um, uh, as reference, I am using a Definity documentation called Staking and Rewards, I believe, Overview. And that's the docs I'm using. I'm going to leave it as a link in the description if you want to read the docs yourself. But the information that I'm giving you is directly from the Definity documentation. So here we go. So the first thing we have to cover is the fact that your staking rewards is determined by four things. Uh, the first one being the how much ICPs you own, right? The second one is your dissolved delay. How much time have you locked this ICP for? The third one is the age of your neuron. So there is a grandfather system going on here. The age of your neuron is a determinant. And the last one is how many proposals have your neuron voted on? So those are the four things that determine your uh, staking rewards. Now, given that you are probably following a neuron, like I recommended in a previous episode, so you should follow a neuron, It's I'm going to take it as a given that you are voting on all the proposals, right? So I'm gonna take that as a given. Uh, you're following a neuron. I did a tutorial on that. And if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you could hire me at James Allen Zero to help you. I charge 150 an hour. You're following a neuron and you're voting on all the proposals. So I'm not worried about that. At this point, if you're voting on all the proposals, what's gonna determine your staking rewards now is primarily your voting power. And there is a calculus mechanism for that. And it's also listed in the ICP docs and I'm gonna use that as a reference. So your voting power can be calculated. Uh, so the first metric is how many ICP tokens you have. For each ICP token you have, you get one voting power. So it's a one for one for ICP tokens you hold. Okay, so far so good. The second one is how long you lock your ICPs for, the dissolved delay. So that's a multiple. It multiplies your voting power. So if you locked it for uh, the smallest amount, which is six months, uh, you, have, you, you get a multiple of 1.06, I believe. I'm going to list the documentation so you could see uh, that you know I'm accurate. I believe it's 1.06. So that's the smallest multiple you get if you lock it for six months. The max multiple you get is if you lock it for eight years, you get a multiple of two. So if you lock it for eight years, uh, you basically multiply it by two in terms of voting power. Okay, so far so good. The third multiple, well, the second multiple, because the ICP is, is the principle, right? You get 1.1 ICP for one vote. So it's one for one. The second multiple is the age of your neuron. Um, if your neuron is uh, a day old, you just times it by like one. So you just get a multiple of one. So no multiple at all because one uh, just gives you the identical number you give it. 
If your neuron is four years or older, so it is capped at four years, uh, you multiply it by 1.25. So uh, once your neuron reaches uh, four years, uh, you basically get the maximum uh, multiple you could get. And it's capped at four years and you basically uh, get a multiple of 1.25. So the maximum voting power you could get is two and a half time each of the ICPs you own. So two and a half time your ICPs is the max voting power you will get. So to give you a live example, so let's just say you have a thousand ICPs and it's locked for eight years. That's the dissolve delay you set. So times that a thousand by two. So now you have 2000 and let's just say uh, you've been in a game for a while and you know your neuron is four years old. So you times that number again by 1.25 and you should notice that you will get 2,500. So your voting power will be 2,500 because you have it locked for eight years and your neuron is four years old or more. Uh, so, you know, that thousand ICP will yield a voting power of 2,500. Um, that's it, 2,500 voting power, I guess. Now to understand the complete picture, however, in terms of like how much tokens you get now, you need to look at the NNS. That's how you will get the complete picture of like how much rewards you get, like how much tokens you get specifically. The NNS um, uh, at Genesis allocated 10% of the total supply for staking rewards. So at Genesis, Genesis for the internet computer was uh, May 2021. So at Genesis, the NNS allocated 10% of the total supply for staking rewards. And that number is going to go down every year till it reaches 5% after eight years from Genesis. I'm going to say that one more time. That number is going to go down every year um, till it reaches 5% after eight years. So eight years from uh, Genesis, so that will be 2029, 5% of the total supply of ICP will be allocated towards staking rewards. Now, how much of that do you get? So let's use a simple example that Definity actually uses. So let's just say this is a simple illustration here. This is a very simple illustration used from the, in a Definity documentation. Let's just see uh, in that year, um, a thousand ICPs have been allocated for um, uh, staking rewards. That's the total number. Uh, a thousand ICPs will be allocated towards staking rewards rewards. All right. So far, so good. There's two neurons. One neuron has a voting power of 20. The other neuron has a voting power of 80. So given this circumstance, right, uh, the NNS will see that and it will give the neuron with the voting power of 20, 200 tokens, and it will give the neuron with the voting power of 80, 800 tokens. And there you go. So basically your voting power, uh, determines the percentage of the reward that you get from that pool. Remember that pool is dictated by the NNS and every year it will go down uh, till it reaches 5% in 2029 and it, it stays there. So uh, every year that number of rewards will go down in terms of percentage of supply. But as a supply increase, it makes up for it as you can imagine. And how much you get from that pool, whatever it is that year, will be determined by your voting power, which you've learned how to calculate on that uh, previous example I gave you, just one for one ICPs. If you lock it for eight years, times it by two. And if your neuron is over four years old, times it by 1.5. So two and a half times the number of ICPs you have if you have it locked for eight years and your neuron is over four years old. And once um, uh, the NNS sees how much supply of tokens it has allocated to staking rewards, if you voted on all the proposals, it will look at your voting power and that will determine the percentage of tokens it will give you based on a supply allocated that year. And like I said, at Genesis, it was 10% and it's going to go down every year till 2029 until it reaches 5% and it's going to stay there. Uh, the documentation did say that NNS proposals could change this tokenomic, but I'm giving it to you as it is right now. So that's it. I hope this video helped you. I hope uh, it was useful to all of you guys asking what's going on. Is there a grandfather system? Yes, there is. Um, uh, do, do I lock my ICPs? No, you don't lock the rate. It's just your neurons get higher multiple as they get older, but that multiple 
caps at after four years. Now, before I go, there is another user that asked a question that I'm curious to you guys' thoughts on that. I'm going to read to you the question. He said, hey, bro, uh, will you be selling all your ICPs at a thousand this bull run? Or are you slowly taking profits along the way? Just asking, I'm still devising my exit plan. A thousand for one ICP sounds amazing, but how realistic is it for this bull run? My worry is to hold 1,000. My worry is to hold for 1,000. It reaches a few hundred bucks and I never cash out and miss out. So he's basically asking me if ICP will reach $1,000 in the next bull run. And the short answer to that is no, I don't think so in my personal opinion. For ICP to reach $1,000, it will have to surpass the market cap of Ethereum. I don't see that happening in the next bull run, to be frank. So uh, my hunch is ICP will um, maybe reach over $100, 150 in the next bull run. But that's my hunch. But let me be clear. I don't think I'm the best at this um, uh, price prediction stuff. Um, uh, I think Jerry is much better at this stuff than I am. Uh, he seems to have a better grasp of the finance side of the house. So I know a lot of you guys uh, who watch my content also follow Jerry. What did he say? Did he give a number as to what he can expect in the next bull run? Let me know. Share it in the comment section. Shout out to Jerry, by the way. And yeah, I, I don't really know. I don't expect ICB to reach 1,000 in the next bull run because it will have to surpass Ethereum market cap, and I don't see that happening in a long time. So um, that's that's my answer to it. But again, I'm not the best person for that. I'm more of a developer guy. Um, so yeah, I, I'm better at giving you a developer perspective than a speculator finance perspective. So that's just my honest answer. Um, uh, follow Jerry Benfield. He probably has a better answer for you than I do. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.